Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Here we go. Hey, folks. Here we are. Oh! oh. Look at that. What is it? Cirque is so gay? <laughs> All right. That's not bad. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Oh. Woo. All right. I'll catch it in my <laughs> mouth. Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh, that didn't seem great. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey, fun show. Good to be here. Good to be back. Look at that, everybody. It's oh, all over. The Nuva okay. Ring. I know. I mean, you think of the evolution of this show. It oh, was a three-year period where it was just you, man. Boink, and Pig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just call me a farmer, because uh, oh, ah, that's, uh, that's the title for you. Um, yeah, I know. I know more about hogs than uh, Jimmy <laughs> Dean. I mean, it's wild, and now we're both married. And now, what's next? Death? We're going to be dead. Oh, Cancer, I, AIDS. I hope. I need it to come soon. I know. That's the weird thing. Once you're married. You're like, all right, well, I guess hopefully one of us dies. Yeah, maybe we'll have a kid on accident or a miscarriage. Who knows? But uh, the future is uh, here. You got to just hope for death. I mean, that's it, that's right? That's it. Come on, bus. Just hit me with a bus. Maybe AIDS. Yeah. Uh, the sky's the limit. Well, there's like tit cancer. Oh, can pussy I get that? cancer. <laughs> can I, I got men, that. Men can get uh, breast cancer. Oh, True. all right. Yeah. Boy can pig. Chuck had it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got a mastectomy. I think that's what that is. <laughs> um, but uh, man, I, I'm still reeling. We just did a half an hour off camera yeah. about the wedding. Oh yeah, I can't get back into the groove of real life. I can't either. It was what a, a time. It was a whirlwind. It was magical, Jerry. Magic. And uh, I was there for eight days, and I just slipped into that that wedding. Wow that wedding wave and just rode it and i was drunk for four days straight and uh living on living on a cloud yeah and it's it's hard and weird because i barely got to see you you miss a lot of the fun because yeah. you're doing the wedding stuff and you're eating out her parents and sure. you're fucking her uncle yes yes gotta meet the family yeah but we had that one hang at the breakfast that was big breakfast breakfast wednesday morning that was the big knife fight. we needed that yes which were you there for the knife fight still? I missed the knife fight. Uh, I, I damn. Switched. Salicu showed up, I left, and he took my spot. He saw that. Yeah, but by the way, first of all, you know, I, I like to talk kooks, a lot of kook talk. Yeah, well, it's no shortage of kooks in that town. You, you go to New Orleans, and by the way, New Orleans makes New York, it's like swinging with two bats. Mm. I hang out with New Orleans for four days, in New Orleans for four days, although it feels like you're hanging out with New Orleans. I like that. There you go. I put that on the brochure. And, uh... You come back to New York, I'm taking the subway at 1 a.m. with my pants off. I'm taking that because New Orleans is so frightening. Sure, it's a spooky town. It's just a wild scene. But these, these some people that won't acknowledge uh -huh. the kookiness. Yes, well, if you acknowledge it, it makes it real. People like to live in that fantasy world, you know? They like to go, hey, New Orleans, French Quarter, beignets, booze fest, Mardi Gras. And then you go, what about these kooks? They go, ah! Let me enjoy this tuba. Yeah, sometimes I have this. Do you ever have this in life? Because you're similar to me. Anything I'm thinking, I just say. I'm just always saying what I'm thinking constantly. I like yes. to talk. I'm Michael a Richards did that. Yeah, and I've I almost said the same thing once, but uh, <laughs> well, I was at a youth basketball game. Uh, <laughs> you had a lot of money on it. I get it. I'm joking. Chuck's making a face. You make me no, nervous. No, Is no, that no. should I not have? That was good. Tippy toe. Uh huh. Boy can pigs. But yeah. sometimes you, you know you say something. <laughs> Like, for instance, like, I was just talking about this this morning because I was talking to a, a guy that we know. Uh huh. And when you really get in, there's some certain people that put on a a mat, a bubble. Of put like, on airs. I'm, I'm this, Brendan Ayers. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, such, I'm this way. Air supply. But then when you really talk to them, you're like, oh my God, you're crazy. You're like more neurotic. My point is, I've always been thought of as like a neurotic, anxious guy. Mm -hmm. But then I talk to people and I'm like, this person's way worse than I oh, ever was yeah. at my worst. They're just pretending to be like tough guy. Oh, well, I find that anybody who's pretending to be tough guy, pretending to be cool, like if that's a big part of their personality, they're actually the exact opposite. Like mm -hmm. Cosby. 
Yes. You're going all in on the family, man. Pull your pants up. Don't curse. Wear a sweater. Eat pudding. You're raping. That's right. I'm glad I never said any of those things. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, I like to talk about the kooks. I'm like, you got to be careful over there and, and this, place, sure. this place. And then people start going, you need to get out more. I have certain people are like, right. you're sheltered. And I'm like... No, I'm unsheltered. That's why I'm talking about this. I see. I'm walking see. everywhere. That's why I keep having run-ins with the coops. Right, right. I'm like, if you're saying this is not an issue, you're probably inside. Maybe a little denial. I'm like, I'm telling you, last night, I was walking home, and there was a guy on the sidewalk next to my hotel going, help me. Ah! Well, <laughs> like, Stavros hadn't eaten in about four <laughs> hours, so I get it. But yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, it is wild out there. It's, There's a lot of drugs, a lot of booze, and a lot of poverty. It's wild. And then we're at breakfast, 10 a.m., big group of us. A knife fight breaks out right in uh, Jackson Square there. I missed the Beat It video going down. <laughs> I, where was I? I'll send you my Beat It video. <laughs> it's, uh, Where's Louis? <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> Patreon. But these, these two guys with knives going, fuck you, motherfucker, fucking Ooh. fuck you, screaming, 10.30 in the morning. So then I turn, I'm like, can I get a, uh, a uh -huh. what, what? And they go, uh -huh. those guys aren't going to bother you. And I'm like, can't we They're have right some there. levity? Yes. Can't we go, oh, that's hilarious. You right. were just talking about this. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm sure they'll be perfectly even keeled as we walk by. Sure, these guys sure. in a knife fight at 10 Well, that's a bit of narcissism. People go, wow, that is crazy, but it won't happen to me. It won't right. affect me, but it can definitely affect you. I mean, I've been mugged in this town many a time and in that town. But let me ask you, was it was it super New Orleans-y? Was it a crawdad and a gator? Going at it or a pirate and something. It was a well. This is the best. So this is the, the the clinker, if you will. We all finished breakfast. We walked down to La Fin de Mont or no, Cafe. what's it? Cafe de Mont. Cafe de Mont. I confuse it with La Fin de Mont, mm. the end of the world. Oh, that's a beer. That's a beer. One of the best beers ever. Alcoholic. By the way. Yeah. Um, great uh, percent alcohol percentage. Oh the whole yeah, thing. it's a high one. Yeah, the first time the canner did. Um, Fox News, whatever, Geraldo, not Geraldo, who's the guy? Gutfeld. Oh, Gutfeld. So Red the, Eye. Back in the day, I was like, ah, oh, it's your, your first TV spot. So I got him a big bottle of La Fin de Mont. Uh-huh. And then I was walking up the subway, and it f slipped out of my hand. So uh -huh. I just went, and just broke. And I was so poor, I couldn't afford another one. So I just handed him a bag uh -huh. with a glass of... Well, it's the thought that counts, I guess. But isn't that funny, too? Back then, you did Fox News, and it was like, good for you! Now you do Fox News, people are like, oh, your career's over. Yeah, you it, gotta It was a better number. time where you could just live and do shit. Yeah, it was a little different. Yep. But the clinker, so we all go yes, to clinker. Cafe de Mon, we're walking back, and we see the knife fight guy. He's a tap dancer. Ah! He's a professional. He's like doing this. <laughs> and uh, you're just like, if, I, if someone pulled a knife on me, and I pulled a knife on them, we screamed at each other... Uh, I, I'd move back home. Of I, you'd course. never see you never hear from me again. Of this course. guy's like, all right, I gotta go to tap dance. I gotta go to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, so wait a minute. Who was the other guy? Like, was it a was it a racial thing? Was it a financial thing? Was it a political thing? One was black and one was white, but I don't feel like oh. it was racial. I think no. it's just they're just both street guys. Yeah. That Probably turf territory, turf. Yeah, turf war, surf and turf. Yeah, I didn't know if it was a Jew Palestine or some kind of. Uh, you know, Ukraine, Russia thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, it was just, I, they were just screaming. And it was, I mean, again, like, to me, it's like, it's fun to talk about and joke about, but you're like, yeah, we're not in danger. We're over here. It's yeah. like, it's annoying when people take bits serious, where you're like, sure. this is crazy. We're all going to die. We got to get out of here. We got to move the wedding. The wedding's yeah. off. And they're like, you're going to be okay. And right. Like, yeah, no, I know. I'm just joking. It's a bit. I'm also. kidding. <laughs> I'm doing a bit. But Same it, with the cat. The, Greg the course. cat. They're like, Jesus Christ, you piece of shit. Of I'm like, it's funny. Yeah, like when everybody would bring up marriage uh, a couple episodes ago, I would go, ah, that was real. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're doomed, but. My, my point is, the knife fight shit is no joke. It's there. I when We used to go to Mardi Gras. Before cell phone cameras and whatnot, back in the 80s, we'd get a balcony on the French Quarter, look down at bourbon, and you'd see pickpocketing, you'd see a guy grope a lady, mm -hmm. you'd see fist fights, you'd see uh, pushing, you'd see a, uh, what do you call the knockout game? Oh, Jesus. You, could, you would just have a front row ticket to all the wilding, as they say in the Giuliani years, and it was bananas, and you're like, oh my God, this is just where I live. Like, I got to go down there at one point to go home. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's scary business. What's the name of my neighborhood I was in? Marigny, Marigny, Marigny. Marigny. I can never quite. It's a French word. 
word that means kook. Yeah, well, it was it was something. I mean, uh, should we just go through the whole thing? It's like when my wedding, I was like, give me the whole experience. You want to have everybody in so you yes. can hear the stuff that you miss. Right, right. Well, I mean, we could start. You, the First of all, the wedding was on a Thursday. We had the rehearsal on a dinner on a Wednesday. And I believe you got in on a Tuesday. I came in twos. There you go. So first things first, we did the big Tipitina show. <sighs> yeah. Old Sean what Patty. Nice. Fatty Patty. What he, a night. Killer. It's Tipitine's legendary rock room, blues room, whatever you want to call it, in the in the uh, the Big Easy. And he said, who's going to be in town? I said, List. I said, Umar. I said, this guy. You know, the the, the list gets worse as, as you go. But, yeah, uh, it was you and me, basically. But, yeah, um, <laughs> and Sean. And we had Doug Key pop on. We had May pop on. We had a couple others. Brittany Cardwell. Yes. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yes. And uh, Andy Haynes. Andy Haynes. Andy Haynes. He might have had set of the night, by the way. That's what the, the buzz on the street was. Oh, is that right? That's what I'm hearing. Wow, I missed it. I was upstairs for all. I didn't see any show. I didn't either, which is a good sign of a green room hang. Oh, you know yeah. what I, I didn't realize, though? So I went down, because I thought May was going to get a huge pop. Right. It's her wedding. But I realized we didn't really promote it. By the way, a lot of upset Tuesdays, because they only heard about it the morning of, and it was yeah. already sold out. And I might have said the wrong venue on the pub. You did. You did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, gays. <laughs> it was his wedding. You got to let him have it. Yeah. Uh, we'll send you the tape. Yeah. But I thought it was going to be 100% twos gays. And I was like, they're going to explode when May comes I out. I see. And then I said, I was like, I'm coming down here. You're going to get a pop. And she was like, I think so. <laughs> and then she came out and uh, no pop. Uh, and I think I think it was just Sean. Pa- I think it was just comedy fan. I think there was not I that many was. gays there. I think you're right. And then I think... They were not aware that this was like a wedding spectacular. I think they were just oh. like, oh. I think that it was general comedy fans that know him because the way they were, he was promoting it was, this is a, sh- a secret comedy show with a bunch of New York comics who are here for no particular reason. I see. And so people knew the New York comedy scene was coming for your wedding. Right. But it wasn't necessarily like just Joe and Mark fans. It was general like, oh, who's it going to be? It could be anybody. It could be uh, Ari. I think you're right. Yeah. And I think know? Ari was... Maybe build a little bit too, and he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't there. Yeah, because I, when I came out, there's like a handful of Tuesday people I could feel, but I feel like there was a lot of people there that were just like, certainly they know you and they know Patton. Yes, but I didn't. Th- I didn't. I thought like this was clear. This is the Mark right. Norman wedding show. I thought that was clearer too. And I think that they were like, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because at one point I was like, hey, I'm just doing my marriage set, so Mark knows he's still going to get laid. And I think they were like, I don't know. Right. Well, you had wow. a good set. No, it was a good set. And a good a show. Crowd. Yeah. Great crowd. Good Great show. Crowd. Oh, it, uh, Young Blood was on. Oh, and, yeah. Um, boy, what a hang, though. Just a great time. I love oh. being in a big green room. I Leather the, chairs. No, 25 people in the green room was killer. Legendary green room, too. I mean, there's yeah. been some heavy hitters in that place. And then you see, like, Liz shows up. Liz, Liz the manager Liz of the cellar. There. And, yeah. like, her in New Orleans was, was fragging my brain up. I was like, what the fuck? It was worlds colliding. She was great. And Liz we, we, we all showed yeah. the airport at the same time. Liz was on my flight, which is a fun feeling, because I was in first class, first seat. And Liz gets on. And she's like, what the fuck? And I was like, hey! Yeah. And then she took my book and threw it across the plane, which was fun. Ah! Hayes was across from me. That was exciting. By the way, May killed, I have to say. She I'm had not, a great uh, set. Yeah. Killed. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you're on the same flight. There's nothing better than being on the same flight. Then we get over, we walk over to the Uber section, and um, and what's his toes? What's your name? Chuck I was there. I Shelby. Oh, no. Uh, right, Chuck. That's yeah. the one. Chuck yeah. was there. We rode together to yeah. that the hellhole that he stayed in. He stayed in the fucking... Oh, yeah, where were you? A little kooky. Uh, well, I, f- I looked up the wedding venue, and there was a place that was four minutes away walking. Ah. So I was like, I'll just stay there, and it was cheaper. But oh, you know what? I just realized we talked about this. Oh, on the last week's yeah, episode, yeah. we recorded in the hotel room. In the oh, hotel room, you're right. But you're this right. is like Tuesday. right now, though. We only got to this point because we recorded like right then when we yeah. all arrived there. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. So skip my. Well, we hotel talked room. about the hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. All right. Well, either way, we all got out unscathed. So you fly in, you go to your, you have a beauty. You're in the trendy. Peter, Paul, and Mary, or whatever the fuck it's called. Which I dropped Chuck off at his hotel, and well, he rode to his. I said goodbye to him. Then I'm walking to the neighborhood. You're dragging a suitcase, which is never good. Again, you try to be safe, because, you know, it's got some edge. 
And I'm like, I got a winter coat on, uh, a winter hat. I'm wearing, I'm wearing an Iowa hat and a Patriots T-shirt, and I'm dragging a suitcase. Right, right. A ball, uh, Boston stuff. You got yeah. a shirt that says "fuck me in the ass." It's not good. So I'm like picking up the pace, being like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. I'm clearly, I'm, I'm a mark. Sure. And then, Norman. Uh, and then I, I walk up to the hotel. It's this big golden cathedral. church cathedral, and I hear. Joe, and it's May and her broad oh, friends. Oh, yeah. We had uh, breakfast there, and I, I couldn't handle her friends for that long, so I, I skedaddled. But it was very exciting, and she was like, come over here. We're at this bar. And I said, great. I'll shed down my gear. I throw my stuff in there. And then I was like, hey, May invited me to this thing. Should I go over there? And then classic Norm, you're like, come on over. And I go, all right, I'll be over. And then I get there. It's just a dive bar with two toothless assholes, not a... <laughs> Not a party in sight. Where was this? Our bar. Oh, the our bar. Because she's like, we're going over to our bar. And then time passed. I showered and jerked off and, and, you know, whatever. And then uh, I was like, all right, let me go. And I I felt like I was being um, progressive because I was like, let me wait till other people are here. Some buddy system. I don't know. But I was like, you know what? May invited me over there. there I don't know go. these. I'm going to go meet some family, some friends. Mark must be dying. I'm going to really face my fears and, and walk through this hellacious neighborhood and go meet, go glad hand and go, I'm Joe. I'm the, I'm the boyfriend. Oh, nice yes, to see you. Yes, I love it. I get over there and... It's just two guys. Like it was like the like the western. I pushed in the double doors. Yeah. And it was like woo woo, and the, the the hay bale or whatever that goes by the tumbleweed. Yes, and then I. By the way, I called Chuck, and I was like, "You got to leave the hotel. I'm next door. You got to get over here because I, I'm gonna have to get killed." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you were like, "Ah, we left there three hours ago." I'm like, "Well, you told me to be here ten minutes ago, but." <laughs> Yeah, what well, can you do? Welcome to Nola, baby. But yeah, the show was great. It was uh, without a hitch. It was about three hours long, and everybody seemed to hang in there. I had to go last, of course, and uh, we had a great time. We we did it up, and, and that was just pretty much night one. Great See, night. We had a huge hang at the bar afterwards. Had a huge too. hang at the like, bar, huge, like like twenty of us. And that's when I noticed the single guys really snooping. Oh boy! You Ooh. know, it's about Ooh. six of you guys who are like, "What's her deal? What's going on with her? Is she gay? Is she fat? Is she got a full bush? Who's that? Is she a virgin?" No. And yeah, so then it, you could see just the <laughs> the scanning. Yeah. Well, this is where you know everyone talks about marriage. It's a nightmare, and it is. But sure, the thing is, the last night to fast forward, jump around because jump up and get down. You're talking about this. The last night of the party, you know, when everyone's tie is off post wedding, back at our bar again. Oh, uh, hard R. We, I'm there, and I found a chair. Everyone's dying. And I'm sitting like this. I got my cigar. I'm talking to Salacuse. Everyone's just winding down. And I'm taking it in. It's a love fest. And I see, oh, no, I won't be naming names, but I see several nerd single mm, douches. He's right here. Just on the side. I shouldn't have said douches. That makes it sound bad. Right. Wonderful people on the sidewalk doing this. Oh, yeah. Just like, is there any buzzer beater I can get? And that's the beauty of marriage. Chuck, I recommend you get married to the next woman that will even look at you for a second. Sure. Is You just go, I'm right here, baby. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. I got nothing to prove. No one to fuck. Sure, I'm miserable. But, <laughs> but I'm going to go home and rub one out and not hate myself. And then you got the, the drunk, I mean, the young blood. I hope I'm not outing him. Yeah. As a gay man, but he's showing me the drunk text he's sending to 17 women, and I'm like, ooh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, Holy tough. hell, is that cringy. I love you so much. I want to eat your ass. We should get lunch. We have a connection. Uh, meet my parents. Let's see a movie. I'll put my dick in the popcorn, whatever it is. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm not doing that. It's a nice feeling. Can you share your swing and miss story, or is it too much to uh, uh, mention? I, well, I mean, I will, I will say this. I was there, and like, you know, there was a lot of really nice and funny and attractive women there, there really that I was were. meeting. Very really attractive. Hot ladies Hottest there. wedding I've ever been to. I'll, I'll wow. say one sentence is it was like the warmest wedding I've ever been to. Yeah, well, we these, like These warm. groups, these groups all intermingled very, yes. very well. Handpicked. Yeah. And I did say to myself, I'm like, okay, I know my proclivities. I'm like, but hang out with the friends. Hang out with all your friends. 
The, the find a girl thing is extra. Yeah. Get to the rejection. Yeah. Come okay. on. I'm just saying, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't one of those guys, is what I'm saying. I wasn't one of the ones desperate. Uh, you ah. took a couple swings at a few <laughs> different people. There was multiple <laughs> swings. Yeah. Oh, you were multiple like a special swings. Swings. I only took kid. one swing. I took one big swing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Other All right. Swings. I took some other swings, but small swings. A couple, sw- a couple, couple jabs, bumps, maybe, a yeah. that helps. Yeah. Up, a couple yeah. jabs and a hook, and you my, got the hook. My big, my, my big <laughs> swing... And this is have it has to do with the alcohol, you know, whatever. Sure. Talking to somebody, you're having a good time, you're dancing. Dig it, sister. You're, Shot clock. They're laughing, laughing, laughing. Yeah, yeah. You have you find something in common. She says, oh, "I was I can't believe you're grow you grew up in this town. This oh, where I yeah. went." You, you know, the alcohol's hitting you. Yeah. Joseph. <laughs> Sorry, I was drifting. You ever have that thing though where you're getting drunk and you're close to someone talking to them? Yes, yes. You know? I have that with children. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, you know, we're having a good time, and I said, hey, let's go make out in the photo booth. Aha. Uh-huh. And that was a big swing. That was a bold move. Big swing, and yeah. I respect a big swing. Yeah. She was uh, taken aback. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. yeah. You were taken aback. Confused. See. Yeah, yeah. There's almost, uh, you know, like, bewildered was but the response I got. Every now and then, maybe one out of Five thousand, that'll work. Yeah, exactly. So I, I respect it, and I've done that and been shot down, and it stings. And you got to see her around and go, "Huh, oh, that was crazy, huh?" Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna put a gun in my mouth. But that's the brutal part of it. Well, Every now and then, it works. I'm, I'm, I, I should have taken more swings in my life. There were swings if I had taken, they would just had their chin out. I had a woman once. We were making eyes on the subway. This is ten years ago, and I was like, "I am. We, we are connecting. We're vibing." And I was like, ah, "I don't want to be a weirdo and bother. Maybe I'm bothering her." You know, I can't just go on a whim. And I walk out of the subway, and she goes, pussy. And Whoa. I was like, oh. Wow. So that's what, what women don't get. It's like sometimes you take a swing, and they're like, hey, what a creep, what a douche, so aggressive. And then sometimes you don't, and they're like, what a fucking nerd. Wow. She was she was cool, and I think I didn't talk to her again, but I think I'm good at the recovery of being like, hey, sorry about asking to make out in the photo booth, and there's a laugh, sure. and we join, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I noticed women someone, get it. Someone said later, they're like, you know, there was not a photo booth. It was a big room with a man in it. <laughs> that makes sense. And that makes and it. And that room was yeah. fun. Boy, yes, we had fun. Yes. Ari and I did oh, the fuck yeah. in the ass. He licked my neck and uh, yes, got great. He touched my leg. Stuff and, and Sam were blowing each other. Sam went with the suck my dick bit. But wait, we're skipping ahead here. Now we're already oh, yeah, at the sorry. wedding. Well, we got, ahead. How did we get over here? Okay, okay. Because oh, we were talking about the single women. That's right. Yes, we're back to night yes. one. Single men trying to fuck women. It oh, was yeah. embarrassing. Swing and a miss, Soul Chucky. Um, so now let's move over. We we did the show. We did the bar hang. Everybody's hung over. Everybody's drunk. Now we got the big <laughs> rehearsal din. But first we had a big breakfast. Oh right, the breakfast with the knife fight. We had Haynes. We had Doug Key. We had the whole gang. Salacuse. Yeah, we great. had the corner table at Cafe Pantalba, yeah. which is right on Jackson Square. It was the best day of the year I've ever. I've grew up in that town. I've never seen a day that nice. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful, and that was a fun day because. You know, we wake up, and a lot of people hadn't arrived. A lot of people arrived Wednesday right. afternoon. Some people arrived Wednesday night, which I thought was gay. A horrible plan. But uh, I texted you and said, hey, I know you're crazy. Life's weird. If you need anything, just shoot me a text. I'll be over here. And then you go, how about breakfast at Point My Goo or whatever the fuck? And I said, <laughs> I'll be right there. Don't point your goo at me. Jogged over, and you were already there, which was a shock. I figured you were kidding. Well, uh, I had to get up early to do a bunch of bullshit. You can't get a moment's peace. So I, I was free for half an hour. So I said, let's meet up, Fatty. Well, that was fine because it was you. I mean, I had just eaten a big breakfast, which was good because that menu had all the gay New Orleans it's Cajun horse shit. Crawfish and gumbo and all the stuff people fly in for and people really enjoy. I got McDonald's <laughs> three times and I'm not kidding. So I uh, believe it. I came over and then slowly, one by one, what was fun about that breakfast was people were coming from the airport. That's right. People were getting out of cabs with suitcases and diving through the window, we and it luggage. was just boys only, except for Doug's girl, who was cool it was as very shit. very nice. It might be a boy. Yeah, probably someday. Yeah, who knows anymore? It's all but fluid. What a great big breakfast that was, and then we all went out. You had to leave, of course, which is the hard part, because you want to, I'm sure you just want to keep hanging That's all I want to do. Two Days of Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp. If life came with a user manual, things would be easier for everyone, but it does not. So when it's not working out for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent can make you feel uncertain. Therapists are trained to help you learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing they'll get to a user manual. 
I love therapy. I highly recommend it. Try it. You know, it's, I know people are hesitant. Starting a new thing sucks and it's hard and it's weird and it's unknown, but try it before you knock it. I, you, we all got problems. We're all cuckoo. We're all wacky in our own ways. Just because you're not wacky in the same way he's wacky, you're wacky in your own way. you got to figure out what that wacky is and get to the bottom of it. It better help as an online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat sessions. You can choose to not see anyone on camera if you want. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists. Available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist whenever. Couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Ah. Hey, hey, folks. Sheath. You know we love Sheath, the official underwear of comedy. They're housing the sacks and labia of some of the best comics working. You know Sheath. I'm wearing them right now. I've been wearing them for three days. i got to clean these things. They smell like flint water. But you got to love Sheath. They feel good. They look good. They smell good. Not mine. But... They're great. Separate the dong from the cods, the eggs from the twigs, and the berries from the branch. Get on it. U.S. Army soldier and Tuesday, Robert Patton, knew there had to be a better way to keep his dick from sticking to his leg, and Sheep was born. Sheep comes in so many patterns, you can have a pair ready for any occasion. They didn't even leave, they didn't leave out the ladies either. Sheep has boy shorts, sports bras, and bikini briefs. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order and Sheath's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Get Sheath and let them support your cojones. We love Sheath. Uh, the duck fell out of his bag, but yeah, so... Uh, Rehearsal. Yeah, so we did the nice breakfast, and I had to mosey on and pay the caterer or eat out, you know, my uncle I haven't seen in 10 years, whatever it is. So then we have the rehearsal dinner, which my mom is a, uh, she's known to be frugal. Mm, not you. So she goes, uh, <laughs> hey, let's have the rehearsal dinner at my museum. Right. You know, save a buck. You don't have to rent a place, whatever. And I go, ah, I don't know. I know my mom. She doesn't She doesn't go all out ever. She's like, I'll get some uh, some chips ahoy. We'll have a tub of Briars, and we'll get some Campbell's soup. I would have we'll, killed for this. We'll play a movie. <laughs> It'll be nice. Oh my God. And I'm like, ah, come on. Wow, this is a big event, big day, big gay. So what, let's let's really do it up. And she's like, all right, I'll, I'll work on it. I was, I was nervous because mm. she likes to pinch. Yes. A penny. And like mother, like son. There you go. The apple doesn't fall far from the uh, asshole. The banana. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I go. All right. So I'm nervous. I'm nervous walking into this, and all my friends are gonna be there. The comedian's gonna be there. And look, I'm a comic. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. We like to go into a, an event and you zing. That's what we do. Certainly. And you yes. certainly don't want to meet nobody. I'll tell you that. Well, of course. I hate a meet and I hate a greet. So. <laughs> We got the rehearsal dinner, and I know it's going to be sappy with my dad and speeches and whatever. And I got to tell you, Mrs. Norman really hit it out of the anal. This was not a swing and a miss. She hit it right on the nail, and uh, it was the museum. It was a great energy. We had a full bar. She had a shrimp boil going in the back. She had gumbo on the pot bubbling. She had an ice cream bar. She had a Arnold Palmer station. I've never seen my mom do anything like this in my entire life. I melted, Jerry. I, I was so touching that she gave a shit. Well, it's her favorite son is getting married. Ah. And, uh, she doesn't care for that other guy. I didn't, I didn't, no I didn't get a does. vibe. Yeah. All right. I got, <laughs> I got an energy. Yeah, I hear I'm, you. I'm kidding, of course. Your mom was just sweet as pie. I, by the way, I, I felt... I was like... Joe List, the partner, and then they were like, 
Joe, okay. Nobody heard of me. The parents never heard of me. They well, don't know that the show. They don't know the pod. They don't even know I do stand up. They're out to lunch. They, they, they haven't heard of anybody. They're like, who's May? You know, they, the whole thing was a surprise. They thought they were throwing me a birthday party. They, they dismay. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I was like, I May thought, day. like, here it comes. Everyone's yep. going to be like, oh, this is the guy. Yep. Oh, Joe and Mark from back in the day. And well, they were like, I've never heard of you. She doesn't give either. I mean, it's a good luck. That's a ball against the curtain with that lady. It's a tough group. But she had, she had a warmth and your dad it was cool to meet your dad and um but yeah the the the, the museum was spectacular yeah. great venue that backyard was Ooh-wee. perfection which by the way got to dj that, that was Thank the you. kindest i was touched to my soul oh i love you dj oh DJ it was great Tanner. it was all solomon burke and sam cook and a lot of people came over and said hey who's playing these tunes and ah, i said that'd be me there you go there you go <laughs> it was a big responsibility and i really took it serious i really appreciated it no no it was great you killed the music and uh video killed the radio star the the place was great it was popping and here's how we do it we do like a I think it was like a six to seven was the family and friends, the close knit with the speeches and all the bullshit. And then from seven to 10, it was bring the floodgates, mm. uh, release the hounds. Everybody flooded in. So you see all your your real friends. It's not just your Uncle Johnny who, who touched you. You know, it's everybody. So I have, I have a great memory of, you know, talking to my aunt. Then you go talk to Doug Key for a second and, and recharge. And then you talk to your brother. And then you get pulled in. My realtor showed up. I mean, it was a wacky group. I invited everybody under the sun. And then I go outside. The party had been underway for a few hours. My dad gave a pretty uh, roasty speech, if I might say. Did you see that? I, 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 I downloaded it when you sent it to me, but yeah. I didn't watch it yet. Oh, Salak Hughes filmed it. Which, it was nice. Yeah, it was oh, fine. It was, it was quite... Uh, it was quite punchy. It was a bit punchy, but hey, you're a comedian. Yeah, he's I a mean, comedian. He's a funny guy. I'm not offended. I just I've never seen him have that much vitriol. He was like, I've been waiting years for this shit, buddy. Oh yeah. But there was a sweetness. Of course, there was some sweetness. Salty sweet. And uh, yeah, and May's dad gave a nice. Speech. He was very touching. Yeah, he was more traditional, but he touched. Yeah, me. And uh, so. <laughs> There was a great moment, though. The whole night's going great. I'm playing with my nieces. Everybody's nice. We're drinking. And I go outside, because I had been inside for a while to talk to everybody. I go outside. The comedians had taken over. Yeah. I see you with a stogie. Ari's uh, got his feet up. Stavros shows up. Boom. Sam's flight just landed. Chris Allen's over there. Chuck's over here. Doug Key. Andy Fiore. Sean Donnelly. Soder. Soder. Uh, His lady. Katie. Magical, and that I just sat fun. down, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I was like getting in a hot tub." I was like, "This is what I wanted." It's the best. So let me let me just backtrack a, please, a tad please. to give you my end of the anal. Yes, yes. So we anal. all went to Cafe Du Monde. We get the sugar all over our tits. It's fun. Then me and Doug and uh, Shelby. My name's Shelby. Chuck. Uh-huh. Yeah. We all Chuck went nice. over to the coffee place, which yeah. we had gotten kooked the day before. Yes, we did. It was a bit of a, it was kook central up there. Uh, yeah. that, that northern part of Marigny. Marigny, yeah. Marigny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What, what's nice. that big avenue with the island across Elysian it? Elysian Field. Elysian Field. That's uh that's where it gets a little hairy. So we went over there and then I was I was duping everybody to get a nice walk home. I was like, I "Oh, Doug, you got to see my my hotel's in a church." <laughs> ah, so you smart. might want because you got the pecs and the biceps. He's, and he's ripped, a man. rip man. So I'm like, "You you got to see this hotel. Oh yeah, you're gonna shit when you see this thing." And he's like, oh, "All right." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, just walk me over there." So we walk over three abreast. Then we sat and chatted for a while. That was great. The three of us, nice New England hang. There you go. Then it's like, okay, everyone's got to go get ready for the ball. They leave. I get the text from Ari. He's like, I just landed. I'm not going to be able to check into my hotel or my Airbnb. I said, come straight here. I run, jump in the shower, rinse, dry. As soon as I get out, it's magic hour. The sun is setting. The weather was unreal. Ari gets out of the car. He throws his shit. He's got two Rogan cigars. He just did Rogan's. He's got those Rogan cigars. Yeah, those are... Peach. He's got lunch. a handful of them, like seven of them. So we go out and smoke. I text Salacuse, and I go, hey, Ari and I are smoking. It's a beautiful sunset. Bring the camera. Get over here. This is pre-dinner. Pre-dinner. Got it. He goes, I'll be right there. He comes over. I mean, you, wait, I took some photos. It's on uh, Joe List Photography. You can check it out. And he took a bunch, too. I mean, the sun is just hitting. Woo! 
And then Ari's got, I brought two suits. He brought two suits. He's oh, like, I'm yeah. going to wear a suit to the dinner. And I go, if you're wearing a suit, I'm wearing a suit. So Ari and I got dressed together in our suits. Uh, Salakus is documenting it. We look like the money, like the bomb. Yes, lawsuit. We, we all ride over there. The The Lyft driver's like, this is this is you. We talked hip-hop on the way, which was fun. Oh, with the driver. You hit the driver. Yeah, a lot of locals Ubering. And then uh, he's like, this is it. And I was like, there's no chance in hell this is it, because it looks like... The third ward in Houston. I mean, it's the worst neighborhood I ever saw. It's a tough hood. My mom's trying to, you know, save the the neighborhood with this museum that no one cares about. Yeah, so we got out. Then the uh, rehearsal dinner was nice, meeting the family, the whole thing. But like you said, your mom kicked. There was a whole out back area with music and the pit, the, uh, the, the, what do you call that? The shrimp boil. The hoof. The shrimp boil. Then she's like, all right, everyone inside. We got to clean up. So right. we all move inside, and we're like, and then this is when the other people start arriving, bigger group, and we're all inside going, we had the perfect hang. I'm dying, because I'm right. like, we were outside, we had the music, ah. I'm DJing, we can smoke. So then Salacuse, being Salacuse, is like, I'll talk to her. Oh, how about that world colliding? <laughs> so Salacuse is talking to, to Madre, and, and he's like, we got the okay, we got to wait about 10 minutes. So slowly, one at a time, me... Salacuse and Ari just kind of step back outside, and we're like, I guess we'll just smoke. And just one at a time, Ooh-wee. Fiore comes out, and then Donnelly comes out, and then Chris Allen comes out, and then, like you said, the floodgates, oh, just slowly everyone comes out. And back next thing you know, we got Tom Petty cranking on those yeah, fingers. American and there's like girl. 30 comics. We're all smoking and drinking. Everyone's all getting all want. liquored up. And what a night that was. What a night. And it's funny because that's all you want as a con. You just want a, you want a green room. You want a place where we can go and say homo and, and abortion and retard and all that. And uh, that's all you want. So when I saw it, I was like, ah! it was like a puddle in a desert. I was like, here we go. But then people keep bringing you away. They go, hey, your dead grandpa wants to say bye. And you go, okay. But you just, it's like a magnet. You want to just get back in there. But you got to do the rounds. I get it. Now, two significant moments for me. And then we'll get to the goddamn wedding. which We still haven't gotten there yet. The nuptials. I'm talking to my dad at one point, pre-speech. And you're there. And uh, Ari's there. And so already it's a little weird where I'm like, all right, I got my two guys here. These are hardcore comedy buddies, you mm-hmm. know, fun, fun rascals, knuckleheads, knock around guys, if you will. And then I got my genteel southern father here who's like, hello, Mark. How yes. are you? He's yeah, very yeah. wristy, a lot of wrist. And he's talking about the War of 1812 or the Battle of New Orleans or whatever the fuck. And I'm going, uh huh, uh-huh. And I feel bad. Like, I'm boring. He's boring, you guys. So I try to. That's right. I try to juke it, and I'm like, "Hey, how about this? Uh, how about this speech? You feeling good?" He's like, "Well, let me get back to the war and all that." And I'm like, "All right, all right." So you know, I shut down. I turn into a nine year old again, where you just kind of spaz out, and then he leaves, and you go, "I've never felt closer to you in my life," <laughs> because you know what it's like to have the weird distant father. It's and you very saw difficult. F- front row seat to it. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, too, it's like I, I was like, maybe I'll try to connect, but the problem is. I've been in this situation many times, and it makes me want to shoot people, where you talk about your dad, your relationship with your dad, so then comedians get around your dad, and you're like, hey, you must be proud of this guy, huh? They right. try to break through and do the thing, yep. so I can't do that. And then he was one of these soft talkers. He's Very like, low talker. Oh, I forgot the speech, and I left it in my car. So. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, it's a good Norman. What's that? I'm like, huh? I can't, so I it, it, it triggered me. I shut down. Yes, yes, you I, shut. I just was like, it was. It, it shook me because he's so quiet. Yeah, and serious. He's very. I mean, he's he's a silly guy. Like he, May's dad went up and gave this like touching, nice speech, and my dad comes up and he's like, "All right, everybody out of the way." And the mic's like, "Whoa!" You yeah, know, it was like it sounded like a Sonic Youth concert. <laughs> right. It was not great, but uh, I'm glad you saw that moment. And then the other fun moment is I'm half in the bag at this point. We've been there for four hours. I've eaten. I've drank everything. I've had nine bowls of gumbo, twenty eight tequilas, and two Percocets. And a blue chew, and my mom comes outside. She goes, "Woo, you guys got to get the hell out of here. We gotta, we gotta clean up." And I hadn't had that moment in twenty years of my mom around me and my drunk idiot friends going, "You got to get the fuck out of here." Yeah, <laughs> which was kind of fun. It was like a throwback to high school. Well, then also, and this is partly booze, but nobody listens. No, everyone's mid conversation. No, no. So I had to be like, "God, we have to leave. Like yes. this isn't a bar." I it's know. Mark's it's, mother. It's a museum. I'm like, we're going to get kicked out of here. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> not to mention this fence uh, can't. No offense, it uh, can't hold uh, the kooks much longer. No, no. They're gonna hear Sweet Caroline and just fucking dive over yeah. the fence and shoot us. We need some defense. Um, but, but no, that was a great, great party. Which, by the way, I'll say this: we are we're comparing dads, please, and very similar Dick but sizes. Your dad. Did give a speech. Of course. My dad, I mean, you could put six guns to his face. He'd say, go ahead and pull the trigger. I ain't speaking. Well, when you die, I'm going to tap him for the funeral. I want the eulogy out of old Steve. No, no chance. I mean, first of all, I hope he dies long before I do. I don't know. You never know. Great, great Seinfeld joke. Ah, it's a great joke. It's always tragic when uh, parents outlive the children. Yes, I hope my parents die long before I do. Uh, um, but, you, but, you know, you'll get Silent Re, or you'll have a root canal mishap, or a kook be. will get you in 2023, and uh, Steve's going to have to pipe up. Yeah, we'll see. I don't see it happening. But no, it, great. I, I can't wait. He great loved, hang. He loved uh, tea and cookies. I don't think he knows that. All but right, uh, you're probably <laughs> right. He'll be like, he loved coffee and cock. Right. Well, so one of those right. is right. There you go. <laughs> but then the big wedding Sunday, Thursday. Well, yeah. I mean, you're forgetting the after party. Oh, after that, we went right. to the MRB on uh, Charters. Yes. And uh, Sam's banged up. Sam's like, we're going to Harris. Ah. Oh, he was out of his tits. Yeah. Stavros, by the way, not a lick of booze, which I commend you for that, because he's like newly sober. You, you, you know the... You know the ropes, right? He's uh, he's eating fucking licorice rope out here, and he's got to cool it, and he's trying to lose weight and be healthy. Great moment, Sam told me. They go to the they go to the casino. It's been eight hours of boozing. They just flew in, and they go eat soft shell crab at a gas station parking lot. That's yes. where they're at, sitting on the curb, just Aww. and uh, he goes. Sam goes, man. You got to be pretty fucked up to eat soft shell crab at a gas station. And Stavros goes, I haven't had a drop of alcohol. <laughs> it, was the, it was the line of the weekend. Which, by the way, you'd have to pay me $350,000 to get me to hang out at a New Orleans gas station after the sun went down. That's true. We'd have to put you in like the Pope Mobile uh, or yeah, some yeah, kind of like shark cage. Bubble boy. I mean, no chance. I won't go to a gas station. Hey, speaking of gas. Anywhere. That's what we call this area, the gas station. (laughs) Um, But, oh, my God, that smells horrific. Get some of that. That's wild. Woo! What are we, gas digital? Holy hell. Well, I had... Good Lord, Fatty. Well, I had a morning smoothie. Usually I have it a little later in the day. And uh, morning smooth, and that's it. Uh, Plus I had a big... I'll be morning my nose. So, wait, we got to get to the wedding. Yes, wedding. After party was great, by the way. Sure. MRB, the whole thing. Hanley showed up for a minute. Shout out to Hanley, because I, I was like, where the fuck are you? Come on, get over here. You're in town. You should come to this. And he goes, I've already taken a sleeping pill, and I'm in my pajamas. And I go, <laughs> well, now I hate you even more. Who and he, travels and he, with pajamas? Yeah, good point. Was he a sultan? So, a sultan battery. So he shows up. Thank you. He was like, this is my gift to you. I'm like, oh, oh, thank you, sir, for hanging out at the city you flew into and, uh, you know, see the groom, uh, whatever. But he showed up. It was fun. And then uh, I woke up at about noon to 3,000 texts and Uh. 18 phone calls from May, the wedding planner, my mom. Where are you? Did you do this? Did you go do that? Did you handle that? Did you get the marriage lights? Did you pay the guy? Did you get the money? And I was like, "Ah!" But I was so hungover that I didn't know what was what, and I just called the wedding lady, and she's like, you did all this shit, right? Because you got to do first looks at two, and I'm like, ah! Huge, biggest mistake. My biggest regret of the wedding was getting that fucked up the day before. Yeah, You're forgetting one thing. You didn't know that you couldn't stay sleep in with May that night. That's Remember? right. S- tell, talk about that, because I don't even know if Joe knows about Great this. Great point, Sloppy I heard, I heard a little bit about this. So I get home this from the bar. Gay, gay tradition. I get home from the bar, and uh, my key doesn't work for the big <laughs> wedding suite. And I'm like, huh? And May's looking out the window going, we got you a different room. You can't sleep with the bride the night before. It's some horseshit law that they made in you know Haiti in 1941 or whatever. So I'm like, huh? She's like, you gotta, you got to go downstairs and check into a new room. And I'm like... 
<sighs> you know, I'm like hunched over. I'm drunk. And I was like, okay. So she's like, here's your shit. I was getting thrown out immediately. She hands me all my shit. I got a clan hood and a, and, a, and a pitchfork and a shovel and all this shit. I was like, all right. So I put all my shit together and I got the suitcase like that, which is never a good sign. It's half open. And I go down there. I do the thing. I get my new room. So I have to check into a new room and I just conk out. And that was a bit of a nightmare. I can't think of a bigger waste of money. I know. It doesn't make any sense. No You're sense. You're like, I'm going to see you at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's all retarded, but, uh, you know, to each is anal. So, yeah. Then the big day of the wedding, the big race. Uh, so the big race. I really had to get myself into shape. I was, like, slapping myself. I was with the photographer, apparently getting ready. They, they shoot that, you know. I didn't know about this. So he's like, where's your crew? You know, you get a, you get your suite here. You got to have your crew. You all get ready. You do your bow ties. I was like, I don't know. So I'm just alone, and the guy's this weird photographer guy I've never met in my life is sitting there, and I'm breathing vodka on him, and he's like, you got to tie a bow tie. I'm like, I don't know how. So we're both watching a YouTube video. This is like three hours before the wedding. Uh, this is the saddest thing I've ever heard in my It life. was so sad, and I'm like, what Ari am and I, I doing? were just roaming around. I know. I should have called. I didn't want to bother anybody. I feel like I'm putting a lot on you guys to come here and do the thing and go gay and whatever. So I'm like, Wah. and I'm putting it on. And by the way, tying a bow tie is not easy. No. Very hard. So no. I, that took a half an hour. And, you know, where are you? Where are you? So I, I get my shit together. We go out on the street to do photos with the bride. I see the dress. You pretend to care. Very exciting. I'm in a full tux. And... We do our vows, and then you walk up. Well, I got to tell you, I, I, I shouldn't even talk about this. I, I told a bunch of people at the wedding, I'm like, guys, I just saw Mark. I've never seen him. He's broken. I've never seen anything worse. Because <laughs> So for my end of the asshole, you know, I wake up, and again, everyone wakes up late because I went to bed at 1230, and I don't sure. drink, so I'm up at 830, yep. from, and I'm out, you know, trying to hide from the kooks. That's the only time of the day I can hang out Yeah, free of, of, of kookland. So uh, I was out strolling around, which, by the way, I love New Orleans in the morning. That sun, that low sun, you're just strolling around. It smells like piss. Yeah. By the way, maybe you can settle this. Ari and I were debating, and I'm 100% sure I'm right. You usually are. Which city smells worse walking around, New Orleans or New York City? Ooh. Well, you are in the French Quarter. Yes, that's true. So I'll give you that. So New Orleans, I think, smells worse on the street, but obviously the subway in New York is pretty bad. Yeah, but... And again, you go, out, you go to uptown New Orleans, it smells fine. Well, this is the thing. Wait, I had a, I had a, I had a point. Fuck. Mm, pointer I lost sisters. It, but, oh, here's my point. Because Ari was like, no, New York City. And I'm like, well, first of all, you live in Alphabet City, like a yeah. fucking idiot. You're a 50-year-old wealthy Jew. You should sure. live on the Upper West Side, but you're a traitor to who you are. You yes. want to pretend you're a hip and cool or Puerto Rican, whatever. Trader Joe's. So I'm like, your neighborhood stinks. But like when you're walking midtown, when we leave here, we walk to Chipotle, there's not an air of solid pit. New Orleans is piss. It's, it's a beautiful piss. city. I love it. And puke, mind you. It's puke and piss. And seafood. Not a bad, not a bad, not a good combo. Yeah, it's a bad combo. But anyways, so I, I, I love New Orleans in the morning. We're walking around. I went to breakfast. I met uh, Salakus and Stavros for breakfast. Then Ari and his uh, date came over. We had a nice big wow. breakfast. Strolled around. We went cigar shopping. We Ooh. got a bunch of cigars. We went to the local tourist place where they roll them and hand them yes, to you. Yes, yes. Which big was spot. a hit later. But those aren't real. Yes. Cigars need to be aged. So uh, it's those like you give those to the amateurs, which is nice. And they were a smash hit at the after party. Oh, yeah. Then we go to the other cigar. We bump into Ruby. We hey. bumped into uh, Ian, Ian Fidance. Hey. We stole around the hill. Good group. Just a great day. So it's Ari like and I. Bald like, convention. We walked and smoked. We're up walking along the river. Me, Ari, and his, his buddy. And what we're smoking and hanging and laughing. And then, like, the day starts. We got to get ready for the ball, Cinderella. You got that right. Then we're walking up the street. And I go, is that Mark and May up there? Oh, uh, yeah. And, buddy, I was worried. Yeah. You know, I've never seen, you had a different voice, a different look, and you kicked us out. Well, 
in my defense, we were on the street. It was public. I'm hung over out of my mind. I'm Ugh. trying to pretend like I'm not because it's her big day. Sure. And we're doing vows. I can't have a couple comedians come up on a vow. That's brutal. We walk up and I'm like, hey, what? Look at this. How I was crazy. embarrassed. We're it all was, excited. I was embarrassed. It's and nothing personal. You go, okay, well, you guys got to go. We've been there for 20 seconds. And you're like, you guys, I got to ask you to leave. And it was like a different face, different voice, different gestures. I was hurting. I was hurting. You were like a cop. You were like, you got to keep it moving. Yeah, keep it moving, buddy. And then I got a little defensive. I was like, well, we're just walking by. It'd be weird if we didn't say hello. We're just saying hello. Oh, I love a hello, but I, I was I was embarrassed about the hangover. I was embarrassed to be in a tuxedo in the uh, middle of the daylight, and I was embarrassed because I was mid vow. Oh, I love you so much. Uh, you, even when I can't get it up, you're nice to me. Whatever. And then you show up, and I'm like, oh, it's my most vulnerable moment. We were walking away, and then part of us was like. It's a street. We should just go back there and be like, fuck you. We're walking. And but so I didn't mean anything by it. We went. We were like, he's broken. This is it. It's, this, it's is gonna it. Be, this is terrible. Well, that's sad. not wrong either. Then, uh, you know, we went. You go get dressed, and it's so exciting. I took a car over, and then I bump into Donnelly and Will Sylvance and Fiore. Oh, yeah, Sylvance. And everyone's packed into that little courtyard, and all the comics, you're like, the comics are over here. Yes. It was exciting. I'm telling you, I'm like, he's broken. He's lo We lost Norman. He's uh. dead. He's, he kicked <laughs> us out. He yelled at us. And they're like, he'll be fine. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's bad. Oh, and geez. you came out, and you look like 100 bucks. Hey, thank you. Hey, folks. Tuesdays and Stories is brought to you by Raycon. Skip the stress and shop online and snag some of the best deals of the holiday season on these premium audio products from Raycon. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life at the ha at half the price of the other premium audio brands. Plus, Raycon makes it easy to shop for every Tom, Dick, and Stinky in your life with holiday gift guides. Try shopping Raycon's. Holiday Bundles, their best buds bundle, get you 30% off two pairs of everyday buds. Raycons are sleek and stylish, and they come in a range of colors to match anyone's style. The Raycon website even offers buy now, pay later options. Right now, go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays and get 20% off site-wide. Ooh, that's good. That's 20% off any Raycon product which almost never happens, or save even bigger and get 30% off of Raycon's exclusive holiday bundle, Tis the Season, Jizz the Season. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays for 20% off your Raycon purchase. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it. Happy holidays. So uh, out of the gate, just to spill out the wedding, because I know we're, we're cutting it close here. Ah, it's a special occasion. All right, yeah. big day. So we go to the venue, beautiful venue. We go in the courtyard. We just knock out the ceremony. We just want to get this. This. I would like to note, we were talking beforehand of like, how is Mark going to be when he's getting married? When you walked out in your suit, you were like, hey, hey, comedy. Yeah. In, in the actual venue. Yes. Well, I'm trying to come back to I'm starting to come back to life here. I had yeah. a couple Bloody Marys and a Percocet. Plus, you had to move the merch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had a stand set up. Um, so, yeah, uh, we get in there, and it's in a court. Uh, what do you call it? Courtyard or courtyard. garden? Yeah, Marriott Courtyard. There you go. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to be on my best behavior. You know, you want to just shout the N-word or something, but... <laughs> It's super awkward. They got all the friends and family there, and the sun is setting, and it was a nice moment. I'm just standing there, and Sean Patton's fat. He's doing the, the officiating. And you get the kid with the ring, the cute kid. Nothing better than a kid in suspenders. A little boy. Oh, it's very nice. Super sexy. Yeah. And then the then my niece comes down. She's throwing the, the bullshit, and uh, the other niece hates it. You know, And you go, kids are annoying. And then... The bride, the music pipes up, and then Sean Patton does his thing, and we do the rings, and uh, we went marriage, and that was the end of it. And Sean Patton got a girl's name wrong, which I thought was fun. Yeah, both girls' names wrong. Yeah, didn't I think he named both of them wrong. Which was funny because at the rehearsal before that, he was like, "I got it. I, can we get out of here? I got this." And then he fucked it up, and that was a fun moment for me. Um, so we did the we did the marriage, and then. You're like, man, that was uncomfortable. Man, that was serious. I hate the attention, by the way. If I'm not being jokey, I hate that. It's, I, yeah, it's it makes awkward. me uncomfortable. 
So we leave right out of there, and the wedding planner handed me a parasol and a handkerchief, and I'm like, all right, now we're talking. Mm-hmm. So we do uh, the famous New Orleans second line down the street, maybe three blocks too long. It was long. It was long. Dress shoes. and uh, These women, I don't know how they walk around with heels. I'm wearing a pair of dress shoes, like $500 Allen Edmonds shoes, by the way. I, I, want, I felt like Forrest Gump at the beginning with the, the leg braces. I couldn't oh, walk. Yeah. Right. You're shimmying, you're shaking this horse manure everywhere. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty cool. You got this six piece band with a front man in the front, and he's got the whistle, beep, 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 and he's shucking and jiving, and you're trying to keep up with him. People are up on the balconies, coming out of this, the restaurants, taking photos of us. It was a, it was a beautiful, it was surreal. Oh, it was yeah, it was. Wild. And by the way, Stavros is blown up. Like 50 people were like, Stavros. Oh, really? I see you. Fucking Whoa. Stavros. Like, Stavros. He was like Kennedy in Dallas. Oh, wow. They probably thought he was Paul Perdome, but <laughs> either way, I kept having to not because I would look behind me and I would see all my friends and family and a big black band with a trumpet oh, just going. Nice. And I was like, "This is the most insane sight I've ever seen." Just this moving party, this wave going down Charter Street, and uh, and then I look forward and the guys, you know, beep 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 beep, beep. and I was like, "This is a, it." Was like like a Zatarans commercial. It was insane. And then he, you know, the turn comes up. You're like, all right, we'll probably turn here to go back. And yeah. he kept going. Yeah. I was like, ah. it was long. It was long. It and was great though. I, I teared up during that. No way. When they were when well they were playing amazing like the or whatever just the way you are by yeah. Bruno Mars, which is a sadder song. But they played it so high energy. Everyone of the party was singing. No. So it was what? like you could hear the during band. the second line. Yeah, but you could hear the band, and they don't have any singers. Sure. It was just everybody in the front, uh, all the people singing the song. Oh wow. Yeah, your your smile, whatever it is, and I was like, my my hair stood up. I had goosebumps. Oh, so I teared up. I missed this whole thing. Oh, I was in the God. back. That's yeah, I was making out with the, three of the girls. Uh, it was amazing. I was in the back looking at asses. Yeah. Well, first the of all, the comedians. Asses. I was getting so fucking annoyed because the second line leaves. And like half the con, all like the seller people are, are hanging out, taking photos. Fo- Will Silvince is taking photos. Get in there. And I there. go, hey, 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 we're fucking ruining the wedding. Right. And they're all like literally posing. I'm like, we're assholes. Right. Like, we gotta go. So I jo- only Mackie and his chick were like with me. I was like, come ah. on. And then eventually Ari, like his buddy, jogged up, but I'm like, it, it's like such comedian behavior yeah, to yeah. me to be like, yeah, that was crazy. You put it at the stand this week. I'm like, we're ruining the ceremony <laughs> right now. But anyways, anyway, so we were the way in the back. That. But, yeah. yeah. So we finally make the rounds back, and it was a great walk up to the venue because uh, May's nephew was like, ah, he's, in a, he's in a stroller, like, ah, and I was like, that's funny. And then we go up the stairs, and here we are. We're in the venue, and it was so pretty. And you go, you look over here, there's a full menu, full uh, food section. Then you go over here, it's a full bar. There's a fucking quartet. Beep, 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 yeah. jazz, three, 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 uh, trio. Yes. That's the word. And uh, you go down that hallway, and it's just dining room and fun and party. And then you go out to that courtyard, baby. <laughs> There was that fun back porch with the with the railing, and you overlooked the band. The mixed nuts were ripping. Oh, they were hot. And, and then you walk down. There's a fountain bubbling, and you go in this room, and it's a full-on oyster bar with a shucker. I couldn't believe it. Mother shucker. This guy was popping them and twisting and shucking and jiving and just big bed ice with the oysters on it. And you go in the next room. It's a photo booth, and everybody's cutting loose in there. And I remember just thinking, this is fucking great. This is great. And then, of course, we have to do the speeches, which I got to say, this is going to get sappy. But so touched. Oh, yeah. You killed it. I mean, what a speech. Uh, May's sister went up. My brother went up. And then you went up and closed it out strong. Big laughs. You did some riffs that killed. couple riffs. And you were poignant. And you made some great I hate the speeches because I'm just sitting there and I'm watching it and everybody's watching me watch it. Yeah. And then you feel like a retard, but you suck I, up. I yeah. look over there. I kept telling myself, act like a normal person. Just act like a normal person. Like, act like a normal person would do during this. And so I'm just sitting there smiling. Uh, and they're all very nice because they have to be nice, the sister, the brother. But when you went up, it was like, you said so many nice things and I've known you for so long and we never get vulnerable. Day. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it was a it was a wallop, and uh, and I know nobody wants to do that. It's a lot of work. You got to sit down and write it. And I was thinking about all that, and it was uh, I felt indulgent, like I'm making my friend do this, but I was also like, 
this is so good and it meant so much and it was funny and uh yeah that was that was nice i had to email it to alan no alan's like i want you to send it to me i want to read it oh <laughs> so i'm like wow well, there's typos and he's like send it over so oh. he's alan's got it i'm scared to see what he says yeah but I, I put a lot of work into it because you know you get to give a speech and you don't want to sound like a, a douche and i've given bad speeches before I had to make amends my uncle's speech Oof. oh it was bad Oof. it was so bad i, I heard so about embarrassed. this yeah People are talking. A- anyways, but th- yeah, so I put a lot of effort in it, and it's hard because you just want to hang out. Of course, so that Wednesday, of course. Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday morning or Thursday morning. Maybe it was Wednesday morning. I can't remember what morning it was. But you're like, I got to blow everything off. I got to sit here and write. Oh, wow. Because you're like, it's going to come and I won't have anything. You got to prepare. And uh, I was worried it was too long. And then, of course, you got to read it and you want to print a piece of paper. And I- I'm like trembling. I can't, you- you- all of you course. do is to tell sh- jokes every night in of front course. of people. But. The, her dad standing there, and your dad standing there, and, and it was, comics, tons and, of comics who you respect and want them to respect you. Comedians, and I wish I delivered it better. I was shaking like a leaf. The I couldn't added, get it out. It was endearing. That was I saw your hand shaking. That meant a lot to me. And oh. just the balls. I kept thinking about Alan, like courage. You have courage. Okay, oh, that was courage, baby. That took a lot of balls to it, do it that. Was, it was great. It, it was, was a lot. I felt like Norm doing the last letter. Uh-huh. I was like, you yeah. bet your ass, I did. And it, it was a big responsibility. It was very exciting. But um, I think there's a photo of us hugging after. It's a beautiful somewhere. photo. I have yeah. a whole video of the entire speech. Oh, uh, and I have close-ups of you. Well, and, that's that's the uh, twenty tier. Yeah, on that's the well, it's, it's on the Patreon. Oh, uh, yeah. It's already on there? Not, it's going up this Thursday as uh, of this recording. Put a, put a paywall on that puppy. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It's worth the price when, of admission. For when, this, when this episode drops, it will have already come out in the Patreon. Okay, so if you want to well, see Joe's wedding speech, sign up. I mean, even if you sign up for a month, watch it and cancel. I yeah, get it. No, it was killer. Well, it was a lot. And I got to tell you, so I was, I was trying to write it in the room. And then everyone starts texting me like, we're going to meet up. And then I was like, I need some inspiration. So I was listening to uh, Pat Benatar. We belong. To, to the, the light, we belong, belong to, to the thunder. And it really got me going. I was getting emotional. Oh, I was yeah. writing and listening to it, and I, I was picturing like us as boys, you know, with yes. a, my, my green jacket and your blue jacket, and being like, well, do you like Seinfeld? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then I was just thinking about, uh, you know, all the times here and the stuff, and it really went back. And then it's hard. I felt like I offended May, though. Because she was like, I have one note about the speech. She said we don't know each other that well. I feel like we've spent a lot of time. And I was like, I was just trying to express I don't know her as well as I know you. Yeah, that's fine. I was worried I hurt her feelings. Well, it's also kind of a compliment. Like, hey, I want. I feel like we do know each other, you know? No, no, I I felt bad that I hurt her feelings. No, I think it's fine. uh, But I was like, that's the note you get. You're good. Also, I'm like... I'm trying to read the things. I kept fucking it up. I can't see my own writing. My hands like I'm like Michael J. Fox up there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Muhammad Ali. But the point is, it's hard to talk about you. I know you so well, and then be like, "Well, man, I like her. I don't, you know, we're not." I get it. Yeah, we're of not uh, working together for ten years. Sure, sure. Yeah, I just I I had a moment sitting there. You said two things that really grabbed me. One is like. Look how lucky we are. We have to realize how lucky we are. You know, you walk around, you're stepping over hobos who are, who are, you know, shaking like you on the sidewalk. And we're at this lavish, extravagant wedding with fucking oysters on the half shell just right here. And I was like, oh, shit, he's right. Look how, look how lucky we are. Look at this giant That's wedding. Crazy. And then uh, the other thing escapes me. Well, but- the, the, the line I was proud of in Salacuse was like, did you write that? Was Because I feel <laughs> this way. I was very hurtful. Yeah. But the thing is... A marriage is the, the thing, and everyone speaks about marriage at the toast, but to me, I'm like, a wedding is not about two people, it's about everyone you've ever met. Mm. And I'm like, this is a wedding, this isn't a marriage, this is a wedding. Yes. So to me, Good it's point. like, let's all look at each other. By the way, I think the Seinfeld line bombed the uh, the Yates, which I thought was touching uh, the Yates, and funny. Yeah, that's well, too smart for the room. That's we got very a lot sweet, of dumb friends. But, um, yeah, it was a it was a lot of work, but um, yeah. So now yeah, that song reminds me of uh, someone should put together a compilation of uh, "We Belong to the Night." We belong to the night. Someone do that on uh, YouTube or something. Get a nice through the years uh, throw video. Throw the fart in. Get some farts fun. and uh, you know the uh, the uh, Brad Garrett book. Well, oh yeah. So I just gotta say, I remember what I was gonna say. Oh shit, I lost it. Oh, I was just thinking when I was sitting on that rickety wicker sofa watching you i was like we've done a podcast for nine ten years whatever it is nine years so that's a lot of hours yes just sitting here talking 
How many? Who has made someone laugh more than we made each other laugh? You you can't beat those stats. Yeah, I mean, with just that that hang that much hang time on a comedy podcast is gonna get some yucks. It's a lot of yucks. It's a lot of time, and uh, it's a lot of effort and a lot of energy. And um, ouch. Yeah, but, it's just yeah. Uh, you know, oh yeah, getting here and the whole thing. <laughs> of course, of course. It. And uh, it's quite a a journey. Of course. And so you want to celebrate, and it's hard because it's like you're talking about a marriage so it's like you're trying to you don't want to make it about you but it's like my only way to talk about you is to relate through me right of like what you've done for me and i imagine for many people so i didn't even know about that by the way that was news to me well i thought it was uh yeah i I was very i was proud of the speech i wish i delivered it better that added and, um, the, the the shaky the michael j fox added to it it was muhammad ali you knocked it out of the park and you were shaking yeah, good point. There you go, old Muhammad. And but I could wait for it to be over to be like, course. okay, let's let's go. Right after the full, it was great because it was a great speech. You killed it, and then it was we're done with everything. We're done with the second line. We're done with the ceremony. We're done with the speeches. We're done with everything. Now it's mic drop, party time. Yes. Kick your shoes off and cut a rug and get some food, get some booze, and and then of course the Springsteen kicks in and then then it's now it's uh, it's official well let me just say this real quick because there was a moment so we finished that and so now i gotta come down because that's high stress. oh yeah higher than hunter biden and now it's this difficult thing and it's also tricky uh. because you want to give a speech but it's also hard because you're like then people start being like that was great that was nice but you want to be like just uh, i don't want to be the guy i don't want to hear on. it yeah we got to move on yeah but what was hard was so with the venue, the dance area was very little, yes. and the dancing didn't start for a while. It was kind of a loungy hang, which is where I struck, because you're trying to, like, you're not drink. People are kind of talking or whatever. I'm like, let's rock. <laughs> and then yeah. eventually, everyone, it was a lot of, like, hang, we ate, and that yeah, was fun. Yeah. You got to get the right seat and the whole thing. Then the mixed nuts. Killed what it. a band. Oh, I mean, they man. ruled. And then it started to go, and uh, I was like, let's go get on that dance floor. And then everyone started to go nuts. And for a while, I was like, how are we going to do this? It's too small, which was actually ended up being great because we were packed in. It was like a mosh pit. Yeah, there was a big fountain in the middle of the courtyard, so you had to d- work around it. So the yeah. band is here, and the fountain is here. So you're just in that little sliver. And then everyone just got into it and went crazy. I was pouring, so everyone's sweating. Doug Key was all over that dance floor and her family and friends. And that's when it really is magical. It's a, they call it, what do they call that? The uh, flow. When you're in flow, when you get really great at something and yes, you start the doing flow it. State. Flow state. That's how I felt. Just everyone dancing. Yes. You're making eye contact with everyone. It's yes. such a great celebration i just got uh, emotional and you're tight in you're like you said it's a close small dance floor so you're you're close and you know, make me want to shout oh. and everyone's doing it in unison and you're all energies are colliding and it was boy it's something nice oh it was blister in the sun and centerfold and all this great shit and then I got nervous again because the the wedding planner comes up who was very attractive also and did a fantastic oh, woman, job yeah. And Killed she it. comes up and goes, uh, okay, so you're going to sing with the band? <laughs> and I go, what? I go, no, what the fuck are you talking about? She goes, yeah, that's what. And I said, Who's, who said that? Right. And then I couldn't hear it because the band was playing. She's like, scoopalaboo. So I'm like, I mean, uh, I, I guess. Guy, I'm not yeah. a whatever. And then I go over to May. This is also a funny moment. I'm like, hey, uh, so they asked me to sing with the band. Is this something you know about? And then she was like, Oh, I think this is Mark's surprise for me. And she's like, I think you just blew it. She's like, that's great. But I think I think you just blew the surprise. And I'm like, this doesn't feel like a Mark <laughs> idea. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I don't think so. No, no, my idea. And totally I go, my idea. no. And she's like, that's hilarious. You just gave away the surprise, but I can't wait. And oh, I'm like, great. So it worked out. I go to you and I'm like, you want me to sing with the band? And you're like... No, what? I don't care. I don't know. I was <laughs> You're half like, in the bag. What is this? And I'm like, well, someone told me I'm singing with the band. And then I don't know how I found out, but Sal, oh, Salacuse. I, I, I go sit on the wicker couch that you were on earlier, yeah. and I'm like looking up lyrics ah! and shit. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is crazy. You so got now, a lot of assignments. So now I'm freaking out again. 
I'm uh, back in the speech mode. I had just gotten over speech mode. You just mode. had your moment. You're done. And I go, dude, they asked me to sing. This is crazy. Like, I, I'm freaking out. And Salacuse goes, you know whose idea that was? Uh, he does this. And he does this like I'm going to suck him off and be like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, this, you fucking pimple. Yeah. This yeah. sucks. I'm like, yeah. I, I'm trembling and... I look like a dick. Like, like I'm the, like the attention seeker. I look like the guy who's like, let me at him. I'm like, you fucked me. So then I go find you, and I'm like, hey, ah. this is Salakus's idea. Then you go, he told me it was your idea. Uh, he did. And so then I go, what? I, I go, no, it's not. And then I go back to Salakus, and I go, hey, Mark thinks it was my idea. And he goes, no, no, it was my idea. And I go back to you, and I'm like, hey, it's not my idea. Yeah. And then in the meantime, they're like, can we get Mr. List up oh. here? Oh, and so then I go to the band and I go, hey, listen, guys, I'm not a musician. Ah. I don't know what I'm doing here. And then the, the, the leader of the band goes, don't worry, we got you. That's so I'm like, a good band. I'm like, great. Okay, so they're going to lead. And, but I didn't realize this. They, had, they don't know the song. This isn't part of their repertoire. repertoire. So I'm looking to him for a cue and whatever, and the three singer ladies just stand there like this. Oh. So I had no help, and they, I was all over the place. But you guys danced and went crazy during yeah, it. You which killed was fun. it, if you ask me. I didn't know a thing. No, you were great. It was you awful killed out of hitch. Well, everybody great went job. crazy. So that was I was glad to see that. And then afterwards, the party after the all of it, one of the ladies, the black singer, came up and was like, "You were hot. You were on fire." And I was like, "Well, I'm not a musician." And she goes, "No, I saw you." I saw you and I heard you. Yeah, when a black woman says, I see you, yeah. I think that's good. She was like Bush on top of the rubble. She was like, the people responsible for this are all going to hear from us. Right. And uh, then she threw out the first pitch and then she went to war sure. with the wrong country. Was it My Little Piggy? What was the book he was reading? Oh, I forget. My Little Piggy was the name of my journal when I was single. It was something. I can't remember the uh, book. But. My left foot or something. Little goat goes to the the market. I don't know. Yeah, the but. little Martian goat or something like yeah. that. Andrew Card from Boston is the guy that whispered in his ear. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun trivia. There you go. So, yeah, you killed the song. I mean, I didn't know any of this, and I, I feel bad that you were, you're having an anxiety <laughs> attack when everybody else is just, yeah, you know, we're going at it. And uh, here's a fun little nugget from the wedding. So... I'm pretty banged up, and I've been drinking for like eight days straight, so I got to take it easy. And I want to I want to remember the wedding. I don't want to just black out. And so my friend from high school comes up, and he goes, I got you a little gift. And I go, oh, what are we talking? And he hands me a bag of mushrooms. Ooh. I'm talking a big Ziploc where it's just popping, and the seal could barely close. And I'm these are these fat, blue, weird-looking ones, you know? They, they look like the cartoon mushroom. It's... <laughs> It's so crazy. So I'm like, oh. So I start going around like uh, Al Capone at Thanksgiving with the turkeys. I'm just handing them out. Liz is, you know, I'm feeding her like Caesar and uh, I'm throwing them to people. People are like, ar, 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 seals. I'm throwing them in the mouth. And everybody's on shrooms now. And my little cousin, she's 10. So oh, she's boy. a bit of a smart ass cum guzzler, whatever. She's, she's nice, but she's a cute little kid. And her whole thing is she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, ah, get out of here, kid. Scram. And she's like, what's in your pocket? And I go, that's my keys. <laughs> and she goes, no, nah, it was in a plastic bag. And I go, oh, you know, it's daddy's medicine or whatever the fuck I said. And she was like, let me see it. And I was like, why don't you, why don't you beat it there, dickless? Yeah, it's past your bedtime. Yeah. You and she's going, I want to see it. And I'm like, yep, yep, hey. Uh, can a caretaker come in here? Can we get s a child services? Something. And uh, she goes, hand in the pocket. So I go, whoa. whoa. That's hot. So I'm like, whoa, easy there, fatty. What are you doing? And she's like, what is it? What is it? She goes, Nana, to my mom, Nana, oh. Mark's got a plastic bag in his pocket, and he won't show me what's in it. Oh, and my I'm like, God. What the fuck are you doing? I'm 39 years old. I'm, my mom's like, what's going on over here? And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, shut up. She's crazy. She's gay. She's a kid in the imagination, you know? And she's pulling at it, and I'm I'm about to elbow her in the face, and I just go, all right, and I grab it. Now we're doing this shit. Now she's doing the jump oh, up. I'm doing the uh, the uh, Hakeem Olajuwon where I'm holding it over her head, and she's jumping at it, and I have to keep switching hands, and eventually I throw it to, like, Donnelly, he... And he does one of those, and she's chasing me around the, the party, like, what was it? What is it? Uh, and I go, ah, it's nothing. It's nothing. I should have just made up, like, it's yeah, candy. Yeah, it's adult. It's, it's beers, but yeah, food. Yeah, so uh, 
I got off just by the skin of my foreskin. I and almost got off listening to this story. Yeah, <laughs> she's a cute kid, and she's nice and all that, but that's her whole thing. She's a smart aleck. She's at that age right. where she's too smart for her own good, and I barely got out of there, but uh, I popped a few later just to take the edge off, and I was... Was I flying at the after party? We got to that. We all, I don't even remember walking to the after party. I remember talking to you for five seconds. Two girls' purses got stolen. Uh, one gal yelled at me. She's like, Who are you guys? I'm like, Bitch, I'm from here. And uh, it was fun. And the after party was at our bar, back at our bar. A lot of characters. We took over that fucking place. We yeah. gentrified it. And we had a, a bar tab going. Who, who knows how much money we spent? I kept going, Extend it, extend it. So they just kept adding money. And uh, we, we had a grand old time. I saw a lot of guys with little. Little whitey in there, sure. Little uh, smack, yeah, yam yam. Everybody was uh, dinged up. It was great. I managed <laughs> oh, yeah. to get a seat. Some woman came up to me and was like, "My feet hurt. Can I have a seat?" And I was like, "Nah, that's okay." Yeah, yeah, not uh, tonight. I was like, My feet hurt too, and uh, I gave a speech and sang a song. So yeah. get <laughs> yeah. lost, sister. I need this seat tonight, ho <laughs> bag. And uh, we had the cigars going, and then uh, what's the kid, Jake Velasquez? Yeah, Velasquez? he's cute. He was tuned up. He's oh, cute yeah. as a button. That he doesn't guy. drink. He didn't drink. He doesn't really go out. He doesn't really party. So he was oh, okay. uh, he was on weed, shrooms, booze, and high on life. Well, he was wacky, and I I don't know him too well, but I know the face. And he came up and was like, can I get a little bit of that cigar? This is a fun moment. So I told you earlier, Ari and I bought a bunch of cigars. Like, we're just going to hand these out like Santa Claus. Yeah. Because at my wedding, Bobby Kelly got me a fucking a $300 box of cigars. I handed them to everyone. Everyone smoked a, an eighth of a cigar and threw them yeah. on the ground. So we got some cheapo depots. And that guy comes up to me, and he's he's all tuned up. I was oh, yeah. he was making me laugh. He was wobbly. He was like, "Can I get a puff of your cigar?" Which, by the way, I, I've been doing comedy thirty eight years. Uh, this kid, he just arrived three weeks ago. He's just right. asking for my cigar, and I go, "Well, that's a little strange." And he goes, "Well, really, what I want is my own cigar." Oh. And then I got to go. Open that box right Ooh. there. And he opens it up. There's about 14 cigars. And I go, there you go, young man. And yeah. I lit him up and sent him on his way. I assume he's dead in the bottom oh, of the Mississippi yeah. River. He's on a milk carton somewhere. I, mean, I thought he was your son. I didn't <laughs> looked over. He's like a little whippersnapper. He's about this tall. Yeah, he's handsome as hell. I almost fucked him. But well. uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a fun moment to have somebody be like, can I have your cigar? I'd be like, what are you, crazy? And he's like, yeah. I want a cigar. And I'm like. There you go, pal. That was fun. Yeah, somebody was walking around opening that thing like it was a Pulp Fiction suitcase, and we were all just... <laughs> it, it even had the leaves in it, you know? It has the oh, dry yeah, leaves. they stuffed I them that. up. It was great, and uh, yeah, then you guys were sitting over there, and I came over and said, hey, sorry about my life. I hate myself. No, you were. I think you were the MVP, and uh, you killed it, the speech, the song, the whole thing, and the dancing. God, I and ripped that dance floor new one. Sobriety, folks. Take a, take a peek. This guy it shows what you can still do when you're... Dry. Well, I'm a slave to the groove. You know me. That music sure. starts going. Forget about it. I couldn't stop. You can't can't stop. Won't stop. But uh, no, what a what a ceremony. Stop. The parents should be feel great. May uh, killed it. I mean, that was she all she planned it. We got a lot of fights, a lot of build up to this, a lot of decisions. And I go, yeah, that sounds great. And she killed it. I'm a lucky guy. Great wedding. I was looking over at her. I go, hey, that's me. I'm in. I can't believe she likes me. You have that whole fraud syndrome. Sure. Um, but the wedding was great. We went to the after party. Then we went to another bar after that, which was a huge mistake. And, uh, yeah, then we went home and both just crashed. And, I, I, you know, it doesn't hit you. It's like a death. I mean, it is a, it's a death of your single life. But, you know, you're like, ah, I'm getting married. I'm getting married. But you're so busy. You're so wound up the whole time. And then I saw her passed out on the couch when we got back. And I was like, oh. That's my wife. Yeah, you got a wife. Isn't that weird? And that's when it was like, whoa, this was a mistake. No, that's when you're like, holy shit, that's crazy. I'm a grown up. And uh, then you, then you just try to try to make it work. Yeah, you try not to uh, die or let her die. Yes, that's the key. Well, there you have it, folks. All right. And uh, we, we got to give a shout out to Sally for the photos. I mean, oh. you want to go see some photos? Go to your gram, Salacuse's gram. He posted a ton of them. Yeah. These aren't even the professional. We hired a guy, and then Salacuse just came in and fucking 
Oh, and that videographer. One. I mean, there was moments we were on the dance floor and a video guy came and he had some tool that makes it look wacky. And I was like, this video is going to be insane. Oh, yeah. The there was a moment everything. during Shout You Get Low and I was behind you eating your ass and pretending yes. to steer it. Yes. And I looked up and there was a lens on me and I was like, this is going to be yeah. a shot right this here. It's going to be good. This, If you put that on the Patreon, oh, to that's, the moon. That's lunch. I'll yeah. post it all. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, we paid a hefty sum for that son of an onion. Yeah. But, yeah, wait till you see it, folks. That was something else. What a party, what a week, what a life, and uh, it's been tough adjusting back to regular life. I mean, what a what a time. I know, I know. It's uh, I did like four sets last night to, just to get back. You got to jump in like a cold pool, but uh, we're back. We're back here. Great app, Patreon. Oh, if big, you're not on it, dates. you're a, you're a tard. And feathered. And, uh, yeah, tell them where you're going to be there, Sloppy Jalopy. I got some serious dates coming up here. Um, December, Madison, Wisconsin, Comedy on State, December 8th through the 10th. The following weekend, the 16th and 17th, Omaha, Nebraska, Funny Bone. Then 2023, I'm out. I'm out hard. Cleveland Hilarities, January 12th through the 14th. Cap City in Austin, January 19th through the 21st. Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, January 26th through the 28th. Denver Comedy Works, February 9th through the 11th. And then the big one, March 2nd, Chicago Park West. Did you do that venue at any point? I don't believe I did. I think it's a big, like 600-seater or something like that. It's a Thursday night, so get your tickets on sale now. Uh, March 2nd, Chicago. We have a ton of Chicago gays. It's one of those towns where everybody always goes, when are you coming to Chicago? March 2nd, it's yes. a big room, a lot and of gays. so uh, sort of graduated from Zanies to this bigger room, so please make sure you buy the tickets March 2nd, and then uh, soon, big announcement about Boston coming up that I think we've said out loud already, but whatever, that's going to be big, so big 2023, subscribe to the Patreon, subscribe to my YouTube, for God's sakes, for the next special that's getting ready, it's cooking. Wh- wait, What? Well, we're cooking. You got another one cooking? My God. It's I mean, all pipes. Is there more prolific queef out there, folks? I all don't right. know. Uh, I'm at the, the the Wilbur Theater. New Haven is not moving at all. Connecticut, I know you're two inches away from New York City, uh, but come on out. Let's do it, Connecticut, where we're not selling at all. And then I'm at the Fillmore. We added a show in Philly, so you know it's my favorite town to perform in. Buffalo, uh, San Francisco at Cobbs. Always wanted to do that. And Miami, Zanies in Nashville. We got all kinds of crazy shit coming up. Honolulu, uh, you name it. So uh, it's going to get ugly. 2023 is going to be a banger. We love you. Happy holidays. Praise Allah. Get on the Patreon. If you're not on it, you're, you're kooky. Get a mug. Get a shirt. Tell Chuck he's fat. Tell and, them about the Patreon. Are we oh, doing yeah. some crazy do, do shit? Your thing there. We yeah. Yeah. We're going to make something. some changes to the Patreon. So Big, good, great changes. Great changes. People are afraid of change. Well, we're going to we're gonna announce it at the beginning of an episode of oh, Tuesday. excuse me. Excuse but basically, me. you want to sign up before January 1st. We're going to give there. you guys a, a final month to sign up before some changes happen. Yeah. But you're going to be grandfathered in, though, if you sign up now. Yeah, if you sign up now for $3, you're grandfathered in for all the content. Yeah, the content. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, thanks for having us. We love you. Everything. Yes, great thing.